Hey guys, welcome back to the laboratory. In this video, we are looking at the electrolysis of copper sulfate. By the end of this video, you should be able to recall how electrolysis is used to decompose ionic compounds and explain the electrolysis of copper sulfate using inert electrodes and copper electrodes. So, let's go. We can investigate the products from the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution using both inert and copper electrodes. Let's start by looking at the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution using inert electrodes. Inert electrodes are commonly made from graphite. They are highly unreactive and therefore do not react during the process. The apparatus for this experiment would look something like this. Here we have a beaker containing the copper sulfate solution and two graphite electrodes, both of which are connected to a power supply. The electrical current is passed through the electrolyte and the solution splits into copper ions, sulfate ions, hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions. The copper and hydrogen ions are both attracted to the cathode, however, only the copper will be discharged as it is less reactive than hydrogen. At the cathode, the copper ions are reduced gaining two electrons to form copper atoms. This formation of copper metal is confirmed as the cathode changes to a brownish colour. The half equation for the reaction at the cathode would look like this, where a copper ion gains two electrons to form a copper atom. At the anode, both the sulphate and hydroxide ions are retracted. Sulphate ions are never discharged during electrolysis and so remain in solution. However, the hydroxide ions are oxidised, losing one electron to form oxygen gas and water. Bubbles will begin to form as the oxygen gas is discharged at the anode. The half equation for the reaction at the anode would look like this. Now as well as the observations noted above, the blue colour of the copper sulphate solution will begin to fade as the process progresses. This change occurs as a result of the copper ions being removed from the solution. The electrolysis of copper sulfate solution using copper electrodes yields slightly different results. The apparatus used is almost identical to that seen in the previous, only this time the electrodes are not made from graphite but from copper metal. At the cathode, the copper metal used is pure, however, the copper metal used for the anode is impure. Just as we observed in the previous experiment, when the electrical current is passed through the copper sulfate solution, it splits into copper ions, sulfate ions, hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions. However, to avoid confusion, we are only going to focus on the movement of copper ions during this process. The copper ions from the solution are attracted to the cathode, where they are reduced. Each copper ion gains two electrons to form neutral copper atoms. The copper metal formed is deposited on the cathode and the half equation for this reaction would be written like this. The reaction at the anode is very different to that seen when graphite electrodes were used. At the anode, the copper atoms within the copper electrode are losing electrons to form copper ions. These copper ions then enter the solution, where they are then attracted to the cathode and reduced. This time, the half equation at the anode would look like this. Here, we see that the copper atoms are being oxidised, losing two electrons to form copper ions. Now remember, the copper metal at the anode is impure, thus any impurities from the impure copper anode will begin to form a sludge at the bottom of the beaker. At the end of the reaction, the cathode would have increased in mass and the anode would have decreased in mass. The gain in mass at the cathode is the same as the loss in mass at the anode, therefore the copper deposited at the cathode must be the same copper ions that were lost from the anode. As well as the observations noted above, the blue colour of the copper sulphate solution is maintained throughout the process. This is because the same number of copper ions are constantly entering the solution from the anode and leaving the solution at the cathode. Thus, the concentration of copper ions within the solution remains at a constant. Here's an example of a past paper question that you can attempt to test your understanding of the content covered in this video. Pause the video and take your time to work through the question. Press play once you're ready to check your answers.
A solution of copper sulfate in a beaker is electrolyzed using copper electrodes. During the electrolysis, the anode gets smaller, the cathode gets larger, and the solution remains the same shade of blue. Give the reasons for each of the observations. This question is very straightforward and simply asks for you to explain the reasoning behind the three observations made during the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution using copper electrodes. We'll start firstly by explaining why the anode gets smaller. Now remember, the copper atoms that make up the copper electrode will begin to oxidise, losing two electrons to form copper ions. These copper ions then enter the solution. This constant loss of copper atoms at the anode explains its loss in mass. In contrast, the cathode gets larger during the process. This occurs because the copper atoms from the solution are being reduced at the cathode, where they will then deposit as solid metal. And finally, the solution remains the same shade of blue because there are the same number of ions entering the solution as there are leaving. So, how did you do? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. Thank you for joining me in the laboratory. Please leave a like on this video if you found it useful and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another one. See you soon.